Hi guys, welcome to VBC Academy, the virtual classroom of Virendra Babu, your physics faculty. Dear students, I congratulate you all for successful completion of your first year examinations and I welcome you all to the second year classes. Coming to the second year, you have to prepare as usual for six papers, that is four optional papers and two languages. Including these six papers, for the science students, they have to work more on labs. For YPC students, you have to prepare for four lab examinations. For MPC students, you have to prepare for two lab examinations. That is for physics and the chemistry labs. Okay? Including this uh, extra workload, you have to also concentrate on our competitive examinations. That is common entrance examinations. Those are MSET, IIT mains and NEET examination. So this year is going to be, uh, to be a very, very crucial year for you. So I wish you all the best to all of you. Let us make this academic year a very successful academic year. And I hope, I pray God, God will help you in all aspects in completing this crucial second year successfully. Okay. Coming to my classes, I will be confining to the IP standards in this series. If time permits, I will prepare a separate series of lectures on IIT mains and need pattern. Okay. So, today we are going to start out the first chapter that is waves. So, what is a wave? Any disturbance caused in a medium is propagated in the form of a wave. Okay? For example, in still water, of, if you throw a stone, what happens? You will observe the ripples. Means what happened? The stone, when it strikes the water surface, it supplies the kinetic energy to the particles of the water. That energy is distributed or transferred. That energy is transferred from one particle to another particle and in this way the energy is transmitted from one place to other place. In this phenomena, particles will not move from one place to other place but energy is transmitted. So what a wave can do? A wave transfers the energy from one place to another place without the movement of the particle of the medium. Okay. So, I want to give few examples for us. Sound waves, similarly light waves, water waves. So, these are the few of the examples of the waves. Okay. Now, waves are classified into different categories based on these parameters. The first one is requirement of the medium, direction of vibration of the particles, and the nature of propagation of the wave. Okay, let us discuss the first one, that is requirement of the medium. Based on the requirement of the medium, the waves are classified into two parts, that is one is mechanical wave, another one is electromagnetic wave. What is a mechanical wave? A wave which requires a materialistic medium for their propagation like air, water is called mechanical wave. So mechanical waves requires the particle to transfer the energy from one place to other place. Suppose say if I clap, what happens? Sound energy is generated. The disturbance created at this particular spot is transferred to your ear with the help of the particles. Suppose say if the same sound is produced in vacuum, in vacuum we don't have any particles. So what happens? Can you able to hear the sound? You cannot. So sound waves are mechanical waves because they require the help of the particles of the medium. That is the reason mechanical waves are the waves which requires a materialistic medium for their propagation. Okay, so examples are sound waves or surface waves. Here we have seen the waves which are transmitted from one place to another place when the disturbance is created. Okay, coming to the electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves are the waves which transfers through vacuum. That is, they doesn't require any particles for the energy transmission. Without the help of any materialistic medium, if the energy is transmitted, such nature of the wave is called as electromagnetic waves. So, electromagnetic waves examples are light waves. Okay. So, electromagnetic waves transfers the energy 
with the variation of electric field as well as magnetic field simultaneously. We have a separate chapter on this particular types of waves. We will elaborately discuss this concept step. Okay. Here, just remember, electromagnetic waves are the waves which doesn't require any materialistic medium for their propagation. Or the waves which transfers even through the vacuum. Such waves are called as electromagnetic waves. Okay. Based on the direction of the vibration of particles, again, the waves are classified into the transverse waves as well as longitudinal waves. Okay. So what are transverse waves? If the vibration of the particles are perpendicular to the propagation of the wave, such waves are called as transverse waves. Means here two directions we are considering. First one is vibration of the particles. Second one is propagation of the wave. If these two are, these two directions are perpendicular to each other, such waves are called as transverse waves. Let us see. This is what? The direction of the in this direction, the wave is propagating. Propagation of the wave is in this direction. So perpendicular to this direction, what is the direction? Upward direction as well as downward direction. If in these two directions, if the vibrations are confined, then such a wave is called as transverse waves. Okay. Here, the transverse wave will be shown like this. Okay. Coming to the next type of waves, that is the longitudinal waves. In longitudinal waves, vibration of the particles are along the propagation of the wave means in this case the direction of the propagation of the wave as well as the vibration of the particles direction of vibration of the particles these two are parallel to each other are along the same direction see here the particles are just vibrating in the same direction like this they are coming moving away coming moving away along the direction of the propagation of the wave such waves are called as longitudinal waves okay so these two waves are very very important we have to concentrate more on these two types of, types of waves in second year syllabus okay so let us elaborate this transverse waves so as the definition i have given to you what is transverse waves in transverse waves the particles vibrates perpendicular to the propagation of the wave here you see i want to uh, uh, show it in more pictorial manner this is what the direction of the wave okay now i have taken the vibration of the particles you see particles are vibrating in which direction upward direction perpendicular to the propagation of the wave simultaneously they are even vibrating in a downward direction so these vibrations confine in the form of a wave and the wave will be formed like this in this way these vibrations completes a wave and wave will move from one place to another place okay this is what a transverse wave with the help of this transverse wave only i want to explain few of the characteristics of the wave okay see here particles are having different different vibrations but at one point here you see this is one vibration this is the one vibration and these are the vibrations which are maximum in their magnitude so such displacements means the maximum displacement of the particle from its mean position is called as amplitude okay in downward direction also we have the same this one and this one okay these maximum displacements from the mean position mean position means this is what the mean position okay from the mean position the vibration is maximum such a displacement is called as amplitude okay so here the displacements the maximum displacements in the upward direction are called as crests those points are called crests similarly the maximum displacements in the downward direction they are called as trough okay so the crests and the troughs are the points which are in phase with each other okay the distance between two successive points which are in phase is called as wavelength that is what another point i want to mention here you see already i told you na crest and crest are in a phase with each other so the distance between these two successive crests is called wavelength lambda 
similarly the distance between the drops is also lambda okay so the time taken for one complete wave this is what one complete wave this is what a complete wave the time taken for one complete wave for the propagation of one complete wave is called as time period okay the number of waves transmitted per second is called as frequency okay are you able to get my point? These are the basic parameters of a wave. Okay, let us uh, observe the nodes. In uh, these uh, transverse waves, crests and uh, troughs are formed. Yes, now I explained. Okay, the distance between two successive crests and troughs is called as wavelength lambda r. The distance between two points which are in phase with each other. Here I will take one point here. Here this is the point. Which point is in phase with this one? This is what the another point which is in the same phase. So these two points means the distance between these two points is also the wavelength the lambda. Not only this. Here you see this is the one point which is in phase with this point. This distance is also called as wavelength the lambda. Okay. So this is what about the simple information regarding transverse waves. Coming to the longitudinal waves, just now we discussed the basic definition. What is a longitudinal wave? In longitudinal waves, particles vibrate parallel to the propagation of the wave. Okay, this is what the direction of the wave and the particles vibrate along the direction of the wave. Okay, so in this case what happens, the particles comes closer to each other as well as they will move away from each other. When they come closer to each other, such points are called as compressions. Here, these are the points called compressions. Okay, these are the points. So here is one point, this is another point, this is the point, and these are the points where the particles are closer to each other. Such points are called compressions, and the particles where they are separated from each other, those points are called as refractions. Okay, if you observe the in compressions, the particles are closer to each other. Na? So density of the particles will be more simultaneously pressure is also more. Where at the compressions, at rare fractions, the density is less as well as the pressure is also less. And one more point here I want to mention, the distance between two successive compressions or rare fractions is called as wavelength lambda. Okay, so let us come to the nodes of this particular waves. Compressions and rare fractions are formed in longitudinal waves. At compressions, density and pressure is more, whereas at rare fractions, density and pressure is less. The distance between two successive compressions or rare fractions is called as wavelength lambda. This is what the concepts of longitudinal waves. Okay, examples for longitudinal waves are nothing but sound waves. Okay, now let us uh, distinguish the transverse waves as well as longitudinal waves. Just we are going to write the points which we have discussed earlier in the form of a uh, separate uh, tablet form. Okay, that's uh, not more than that. So coming to the transverse wave, the first point, the vibrations of the particles are perpendicular to the propagation of the wave. Okay, in longitudinal waves, the vibration of the particles are along the propagation of the wave. Okay, coming to the second point, in uh, transverse waves, crests and troughs are formed, whereas in longitudinal waves, compressions and uh, refractions are formed. In transverse waves, the distance between two successive crests or troughs is called as wavelength lambda, whereas in uh, longitudinal waves, the distance between compressions and uh, refractions is called uh, wavelength lambda. Okay, so examples are for transverse waves, uh, strings, waves in strings as well as light waves. These are the examples for transverse waves. Coming to the longitudinal waves, sound waves are the examples. Four points are sufficient. Okay. But still, if you want one more point, just give the pictorial representation of transverse waves as well as longitudinal waves in this form. Okay. Better even to write compressions and refractions in the case of longitudinal waves, press and trough in the case of transverse waves. Okay. This is what the discussion on the distinguish between transverse waves as well as longitudinal waves. So let us come to the last one that is based on the nature of propagation. 
the waves are classified again into two categories one is progressive waves another one is stationary wave okay so first one what is a progressive wave name itself says progressive wave it progresses okay if a wave the wave which propagates into the space and never returns back to their origin is called as progressive waves means the wave will be generated at one particular point that is called as the source and it transmits the energy into the space such that it never returns back means the wave will be propagating in the progressive direction forward direction okay what happens as the distance increases the intensity of the wave gradually decreases and after some time after traveling certain distance its intensity becomes zero means the wave will vanish but it will never return back to its origin such a wave is called as progressive waves so the progressive waves in general they transmit the energy into the space okay just now as i told you na its intensity gradually decreases with the time and the distance that is what i want to show you okay this is what about which waves progressive waves coming to the standing waves that is stationary waves exactly opposite to the progressive waves these waves the waves which are confined to a fixed region means here the waves will be confined to two fixed points starting point as well as ending point two points means the wave will be restricted between two points okay and it will never propagate into the space such waves are called stationary waves or standing waves they will not transmit the energy into the space because they are confined to fixed position okay so the examples of this sort of waves are waves in a string okay so like this so this is the first fixed point this is the second fixed point and the string is vibrated it will form the loops these are nothing but standing waves in second year you, we have to concentrate and elaborate we have to elaborately discuss this particular concept that is stationary waves concept okay in next class we will discuss about the stationary waves or standing waves in more detailed manner okay okay we will meet again in the next video